Harvesters and welcome to the At Homestead. I'm Erin and it is week four of garden tours and it is hot. It's officially hot. It is like 97 degrees. Um, I had to wait to do the garden tour until a little bit later today because it's just was sweltering in the heat of the sun as everybody here knows. <laughs> it gets really hot. It's a little too hot too soon though, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't normally hit the high 90s until July. I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I wanted to start outside the garden today just to take a look at our ladies. Hello ladies. You're getting a nice clean coop today, this afternoon. It's already afternoon, huh? We've got three lovely ladies. And we are super excited. They're only 14 weeks old, so they're not laying yet. But, uh, and we gotta move the coop. We have what's called a chicken tractor. So we can move them around the yard so they can eat fresh grubs, fresh bugs, fresh everything. That way they can also scratch and aerate the soil, dig all the bugs out, get lots of good nutrition. We have a fence we have to put up. We just got the ladies about a week ago um, and we put up a fence to kind of give them a chicken yard and then we sit right inside or right here and we can watch them, which is really nice because um, they can't be out because of predators by themselves. So we will take, take some time and make sure that they have outside time every single, every single uh, day. I wanted to check on our raspberries. My raspberries have not grown as well as I thought they would. Um, and I say that because like, well, let me show you. So first of all, there's a ton of weeds in here, like weeds, 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 and this is a weed. And that's the cane. This cane was the only one who was producing any type of it, this cane was the only one that was producing any type of growth and now it's gone. And now these these canes here aren't doing anything. I gotta call Stark Brothers and see what's going on because this one just started giving me some leaves, which is exciting. This is the, um, the Heritage Red Raspberry. So all of these should already produce, be producing bigger raspberries by now, so followed all the directions and sometimes that just happens. This is my first time growing raspberries. So don't mind the back, <laughs> the back of scenery. So I don't know if I, the soil may not be draining enough. I'm not sure, but we'll uh, figure it out. So I want, oh, next one I want to take you to the outside garden. This needs to be also weeded heavily. It's so hot um, that I just can't get out here during the day to, to do that. But I'm hoping that um, over this coming week, I will be able to find some time because um, that's part of it, right guys? Like just making sure you can weed and keep all your plants super healthy. So I need to find the time. Let me show you the tomatoes that are out here. So these are the tomatoes that are just a mixed variety that I'm not doing anything to. I'm not pruning. I'm not um, really giving them any type of extra fertilizer. They're doing pretty well. This one here is not doing so great. Um, but ironically, since that one in the back is the one that gets less sun, the potatoes back here have all come up. We've got some five great potatoes. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, and I'm about to, I'm going to have to mound these up this week too. We've got a lot of chores I'm adding to my list. And my zucchini, this is the Ford Hook zucchini. Something keeps eating these leaves out here. So that's interesting. The, the flowers themselves. And I don't see any females. They may have all males. And my summer squash, there's a female super exciting and I'll come out and hand pollinate these if I need to with that flower right there <laughs> and then my pumpkins are doing well these are my mammoth sunflowers this is a black locust that honestly was like 
so tiny a couple days ago and now it's so big. Come out here and cut that off. I planted a whole bunch of extra sunflowers back here. There's one right there. And then, um, I don't see any others. Let me see what comes up. The corn is looking great, looking lovely. It's starting to get taller. So I understand it's supposed to be as tall as your shoulder, I think by July 4th or something. So I'm hoping that they keep growing. First time with corn. I wish I had more. I wish I had like a whole section. Like maybe I should have just dedicated that whole section out there to like just corn. I don't know. It would have been a lot of corn. I just didn't think of it. So, oh well. We've got some straw that's sprouted too here in the here in the yard. So I have first I came upon my onion bags. And I want to show you that they are essentially all dead. And if you've been following the channel, so as you know, they did not do very well. Um, I don't really know what happened. Uh, they got very mushy in these bags. As you can see, it's not wet, but you know, I did order some new sets to see if that would be better. Some of them, when I pull them out, are super mushy. Yeah, like this one is like really mush. Um, so we're going to start over. We still have enough time, I think. So we're just going to try. So I guess this year is really going to be the year of the failure and the, the learning. It's going to be a learning year. I'm going to say, okay, even though we failed, we still learned something because we learned. I'm going to have to review my notes for the, the onions. I'm not sure what I'm learning yet, but I'm sure I'm learning something because, you know, Maybe it's that I need to start from sets and not from the um, the starts that you can buy. And maybe that's just how the grow bags just work better. I don't know. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking to learn, I guess, and really take everything in because this year I feel like everything I knew and have grown with the last couple of years, the last ten years just is changing its mind. So that's interesting to share. All right, so we've got carrots coming up nice. The baby, uh, the gherkins are nice. These guys, this one specifically, every time I try to train it to the trellis keeps pulling out of the ground. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And then I've got blossoms on my cucumber, which is interesting. It's the earliest I think I've ever seen flowers set. When they're this little. Got my other cucumber here. They've reached the trellis. They're coming up nicely um, in that regard. Beautiful lettuce. My other seeds I planted are coming up well. I dug out a couple of the garlic. I gotta come out and do that uh, more. And then the peas. If you saw my Instagram, you will see that I harvested a whole bunch of peas the other day. And we had our first pea salad, it was delicious. And so I have to come back out and keep harvesting these peas. It's getting so hot. See all these, hope that they stay and that they don't die on me. And the other side of the peas, sorry, cicada. <laughs> and the other side of the peas are doing nicely also and starting to produce. So hopefully we'll be in the pea business soon. Um, just such a beautiful plant. Kohlrabi is coming in nicely. I'm excited to harvest those. I need to look at the timing because they're looking like they're big enough to harvest soon. Um, that one anyway. And then my broccoli surprised me with it starting to head up. Super exciting. Still nothing on the cauliflower, but the broccoli is super exciting. And then my purple kohlrabi is coming up slowly but surely and the cabbage oh this cabbage is heading up so beautifully I that one's not quite there this one that one's getting tight that's awesome here are the fancy gourds looking lovely having some blossoms on the on the plant itself which is kind of cool 
I'm like, keep growing guys. You don't have to produce fruit yet. So producing fruit is kind of the plants mechanism, the way, the response, or the natural progress, you can say as well, of a plant, their need and want to reproduce. And so sometimes when it gets really hot, I'm like, Ugh, is it because they have this innate need to reproduce before they die of the heat? And they're like, must spread my seed as a plant before dying. I, I sometimes think so. And I try to be very, you know, aware of my plants, you know, the, how when it's too hot or if they're happy, you know, you gotta have happy plants. House mom, plant, plant moms that have house plants understand. Um, so it's just one of those things that like, I constantly am like, well, is it because they're setting fruit so early, but because they want to just die because it's too hot? Or are they just thriving and they're like, this is, let me live my authentic self as a fancy bee gourd, fancy gourd and a jacky little pumpkin. The side of the garden is doing well. There's so many birds here today. I don't know if you can hear the birds over the cicadas, but like they're quite lovely. They have a beautiful song. Um, so I went to a nursery today it was my first time out, which was excellent. It was great. I met my mom. I saw her. Gave her a big hug. It was wonderful. And I came home with this. I am really excited. I don't have a yellow tomato. My hubs doesn't know. I'm sure he will after he watches this. So he doesn't watch them. <laughs> so you guys will know. Um, I'm going to put it in a grow bag and just have it somewhere where it can get sun. Everywhere is getting sun right now. But um, I'm very excited because that kind of rounds out my colors. I didn't realize they didn't have a yellow until I started like really thinking about it. And I was like, well, I have an orange in the Dr. Weish, but I don't have a yellow. So I'm excited to have that color. I feel like it'll be really beautiful. Um, I'm very much the rainbow grower this year. My kids eat the rainbow and I feel like it's just a beautiful plate when you're able to just like eat all the colors. Your brain is satisfied. You're visually and aesthetically satisfied. You have this like beautiful plate and you eat with your eyes first, right? So I thought, why don't we grow the rainbow? And we are. We're growing them in tomatoes. We're growing them in beans and my beans are popping. They look so, these are my slippery silks. They're finally reached the top. They're doing great. They're a little behind the purple potage, but I think that's good because then I don't get all of them at once. Oh, nasturtium flowers are one of my favorites. Does anyone else just love a nasturtium flower? Gosh, I need to figure out how to help not crowd here. I don't know why it's so crowded this year. It's because the bean foliage is so big and I have beans that have got to be picked off. Look at these dragon tongue beans are in. Oh, they're so beautiful and exciting. And I, I'm gonna have to come out here and pick up a lot of them. Oh, I'm so excited about that. And then the shishitos are all starting to really grow in too. It's all about growth this week. Look at that. I mean, we're gonna, ha we're gonna be rolling in the shishitos and the peppers and the cabbage a lot earlier than I thought. I mean, Wow. And these are my Kentucky pole beans, like the Kentucky wonders and more purple potteds because I have a sucker for that. They just love, I love them. My kids love them too. And these are the, the these are the Kubanels, which my husband's been waiting on. Oh, look, I'm so gonna be so good soon. I'm really proud of this plant. It's really come back. It was really all busted up when I first planted it. And you can see the bottom, I think, where like, it's kind of like sideways, the stem. And I planted it anyway, and it's doing just fine. And then these guys need to give this a little bit more sun. Let's pepper back here so it can grow. Let me just train these beans. Look at that. These are the Kubanels. These are the shortest Kubanels I've ever had, so I'm hoping they continue to grow 
bigger. There's a little fruit, I'll have to tell the hubs and the marigolds. Hello, marigold. Ironically, I didn't plant any red marigolds this year and they all seem to be red. I didn't start any from seed. I didn't buy any. All the ones that I started are supposed to be light. They're called Lady Primrose. Cause I wanted like last year I had these like really pretty orange, very like multiple different colors of orange uh, for marigolds. It was beautiful, but I, I wanted to, to have a softer color. Um, I'm trying to work on my color palettes cause colors are hard for me sometimes. Does anyone else have that? Like when they're actually trying to choose, cho make a choice with color, like making the choice, making the choice with color can sometimes be like a jarring decision for me. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else feel like that? Where when they have to make a decision about a specific color, either in their perennial garden or painting a room where they get a little bit, um, not paralyzed, but maybe it's decision fatigue. I'm not sure. It was easy to plan out the garden with all this color, but then it's like, I wanted the break in the flowers, most some of the flowers. And um, I guess I didn't get that. <laughs> now we just went through this pepper bed with the beans and I want to show you this pepper bed. I think this is a shishito plant too. Look at all those which would be weird because this is supposed to be on the other side. So if the kids moved one, which is the only way I can think it could be <laughs> Shishito, but that's okay. Look at this guy. He is getting bigger and bigger. I think I showed you this the other week. And then I found this guy. Ah, he's supposed to turn red if he's a thunderbolt, which he's planted where the thunderbolts are. So I'm gonna leave him on there a little longer, but I'm like, wow, he's so big. Like, look, you can see him right there. It was like, whoa. And I haven't seen any other big ones like that, but I feel like one day they're not there and then suddenly all of them are there growing. And I'm like, what is up with that? Has <laughs> anyone else seen that with their pepper plants? It's kind of interesting. Eggplant. These are the variegated peppers. My dollar store pepper. Not really an experiment, but I guess kind of for some it might be an experiment to see how they do. They always do just fine for me. It's, it's really the um, germination. They have a, a less high germination rate than the seeds from more of a quality company. But it's all right. Once they get out in the garden, they do just fine. This is also a tangerine dream, or this is a tangerine dream, not a thunderbolt. So this might be a tangerine dream. I think that's a thunderbolt actually. Right? Oh, just look at that. So beautiful. Eh, it's hiding behind a leaf on the camera. <laughs> so needless to say, now that I've shown you every single pepper plant slowly, so that you can enjoy all of the peppers with me. Um, sorry if you're not a pepper person. Let's take a look at the tomatoes. Now I gave them a huge haircut last week. I trimmed off the lower two feet for most of the plants. There was one I was waiting to catch up and I've been pulling all the suckers, but I have to come back and reclip most of them and I'll show you why. Look how much growth has happened in a week. There is my clip, which means it was right here and it has grown all the way up here and it is super beautiful and super healthy. I feel like I'm really trying to stay on top of any type of aphids and, and you know, bug issue. I'm super, oh, sorry about that planty plant. Super, super happy. So I have to come through and readjust all of these um, so that the plant is more secure. I, I'm so, so proud of these. Like, they look so good. And then my Romas, my little squatty babies. All the basil is doing well. I keep trimming the basil. So if you haven't checked that out, check out that video about how to trim your basil. I trim from the top so it gets big and bushy. Um, some herbists just suggest taking from the bottom, but I, I don't suggest that because if you 
trim at the top, you actually produce a bigger plant and um, it, you keep it healthy by trimming. So I would just continue to, I continue to do that. Looks like I've got to get a little bit more out here to get these aphids are coming back. So my lucky tiger is doing well. Look how tall and strong she is up here. Like look at that stalk. She's finally doing well. It makes me very excited. Her leaves are still the same. So I'm just assuming that this is how she grows. Haven't heard anything different from you guys. So I will assume that all of you see the same thing in her where in your own plants, that that's how they grow. They are so tall. When I say so tall, I mean like up almost to my head. This isn't quite to my head. It looks like it on camera, but it's not. Um, wow, Zerpan. I need to come up and clip some of these too. Look at that. It's grown so much. It, the clip is like way down here. Um, <clears throat> cherries grow phenomenally, phenomenally well. Um, I love cherries. That yellow is a cherry. Um, so I'm very excited. I will come and clip you. I'll come clip you guys up. Don't worry. Talk to your plants, by the way, guys. Give them some love. They, they, want to, they want to do well for you. They want to produce for you. So show them that you love them. Tell them, you know what? I love you. You're a good plant. They'll uh, treat you better, I think. They'll be healthier. There's science behind talking to plants and plants living longer and being, being a healthier plant. So don't take my word for it. And then we've got over here our white Thomasole has the first tomato. What a sight to behold. I can't even tell you how much I want to eat that. <laughs> or at least as soon as possible. You know what I mean? Like, I, I see you, tomato. I see you. I also see how big you guys have gotten. My, my. These are definitely needing a bit of a, of a trimmy. But it's good for you guys to see what happens before I give, it, give them a trim and how big they are. That nasturtium looks so beautiful. Gosh, the variegation in the leaves. This reminds me of like the Marble Joy Pothos or the Marble Queen Pothos if you have any indoor plants. Like that more white splash. Ugh. So gorgeous. I just love that plant. Do you guys have plants that you're just in love with in your garden or in your house where you're just like, I love you. Like, I love it. It's so beautiful. The nasturtium is just like, especially the variegated, the Alaskan variegated nasturtium is my jam. It's just my jam. And then here in the front, we've got potato row. Potato row. Also on the list is to mound them up. Um, I have to get some straw. We don't have any straw. You'll notice that some of the tomatoes are not covered because we don't have any straw and I got to get some. And that's okay. We will. We'll get some. We have to get some soon though for the potatoes. So um, yeah, we'll have to do that ASAP. I have a friend that has some straw. Maybe I can borrow some for like a couple of these. Because um, that one, this one back here in the very, very back, you see the tall one right there. That one needs to be bounded for sure. For sure. So let me show you um, the, so we saw this side of the arch with these gigantic, gigantic. Um, and then this side, these guys are not doing so hot. I think it may actually be just because they're in the pots instead of actual soil. Well, they're in soil, but instead of having their root systems go deeper, um, they're growing just fine. They're growing and being healthy. They're producing a lot of flowers. They're, they're still growing. They're just growing slowly. Um, and they're bushing out more than growing vertically, which I find is interesting. So this is the blue cream and the blue cream produces that beautiful, like blue and yellow or blue and cream <laughs> tomato. And then this is um, the Brad's Atomic and it is already setting fruit too. Oh my gosh, I didn't see this earlier. I see you, oh, I see you. I'm so excited. Oh, I mean, give me a tomato and I will eat it. Yeah. 
Anyone else feel like that? Where you're like, yes, yes, please. It's very, very hot, so I cannot water my plants at all right now. It is just they would be, get burnt from the sun. So um, they look really, they look really, really exhausted and thirsty because they are. Um, but I will water them when the sun goes down today, like at dusk, so that they get a nice, good drink of water because they they severely need it. So do my blueberries. I've been watering my blueberries, and these guys, um, these guys have some growth that has just uh, not done so well. Though it's got a lot of new growth on the bottom, and then this one over here has the same thing. All the new growth has come in really, really green, and the original plant is kind of dying, which is interesting. My older blueberries have berries turning blue, which is, oh, I cannot wait to pluck them. We kind of fixed this so that it wasn't hitting down on them and pushing down on the plants. I originally covered it for the cicadas, but ironically, the cicadas are gonna just go up higher than that. I thought that they would drop down to it, but they're going up higher than that. So I actually don't need them for the cicadas, but because the berries are starting to turn and birds can see a blueberry from like a mile away, uh, we're keeping the cover on them to keep the birds from eating all the blueberries. So we'll see what happens with that. See how many blueberries we can get this year. It's exciting to see so many turning blue and being on the plant still. So normally the birds get them. So, cause it's just, you know, still a younger plant. So it's very exciting. And next to the blueberry patch, we've got our pink squash plant, which is starting to get flowers down there, um, flowers budding up. I don't see any females yet that I can tell. Um, so I hope that there's some females somewhere on here. Ooh, that, this is a spiky, spiky plant. Um, it's also vining really heavily, so I'm not sure what I'll do with that. Definitely not a Gosh, if it's gonna keep vining like that. It's more of a pumpkin maybe, uh, but we'll see. And our carrots are hopefully, I mean, these have been growing a while and I really want some carrots. And normally I've harvested some before now. Um, so I wonder if it's just like really, really hot and it's just forcing them to grow bigger foliage instead of putting the energy into the, to the root. So I might have to pluck a couple of these to see what's going on down there. And then the kales are doing wonderfully. I threw some in a salad the other day. The lettuces, the spinach is starting to bolt. It's too hot. I keep plucking, plucking this top part off. So hopefully stayed it off, but it's starting to get a bit bitter. So that might have to go. And then all of my third plantings of carrots are doing well and the beets are doing well also. So. So far, everything is just in its growing state. This is one of my favorite views of the garden, by the way, in my standing in my keyhole, looking around, seeing the beauty and the bounty of what I've worked so hard for since January, just starting to come and bear fruit. You know, there's so many important things about being in the garden that happens to your body. And uh, one of them, of course, is the drop in serotonin levels, your blood pressure decreases, your cholesterol decreases. Um, it increases memory, or at least it interacts with the memory portion of your brain and therefore increases your memory. It's one of those interesting things that um, people at least on garden channels don't talk enough about maybe it's because they're afraid they'll sound a little um i don't know holistic i i am holistic and i enjoy considering myself being a plant priestess and a steward of my land and trying to leave things better than how i found it and i feel like i'm starting to do that here i've, I've cultivated it over the years enough where Yes, this is a very organized and planned out space. It is not specifically like a permaculture style growing where you use the trees and plant within the, the space, a variety of different symbiotic relationships. But everything I grow in here, I do plant with intent of symbiotic, symbiotic relationship, with intent of companion planting, with intent of bringing pollinators and bugs and beautiful birds and other types of creatures to the space 
to help to pollinate the space and, and provide for a variety of different relationships that I can't give them or I can't intentionally plan out. And so because I put all this effort into it, I really like to sit in the garden and appreciate all that it gives me for my mental health. And I'm doing a really important video on that. I wanted to get it out before May and I couldn't. But um, for a reason I'll share in the video. But uh, the garden is, is our space of solace, of solitude, of regeneration, of grounding. And it's really important. You put all this effort into it that you should also reap the mental health benefits. <laughs> if you can it's to me it's important well thank you for hanging out with me and coming along on our garden tour it's only going to get better as things start to produce more and more it is super super hot so we're going to end it here um thank you so much for spending your time and, and clicking on the video and really taking taking note of my life um it we see that and we thank you I hope to see you at the next video. I'll talk to you later, friends. Bye.